Hello and welcome. In this video, I am going to show you one of the confusing part of Firebase. The reason I say confusing because it is not clear in the documentation or anywhere else if you read about Firebase and Firestore. So I hope in this, in this video I can make it a lot easier for you to understand. Also in the end of the video, I will show you some of the tools and packages that will help you interact with data in Firestore easily. I can just directly go to the tools and use them. But if you don't know how to how behind the scene is going to work, you might face some problem in future and you will have no idea of what is going on behind the scene. So I hope this video will make your life a lot easy when you deal with data. So let's start. So far we work on the create and read. We can create data, we can read it, we can display it here. When dealing with update and delete, we have a little problem here. So let me show you what is the problem. So far it works just fine. So let me just design the table a little bit. If I come all the way up there, here is our table. If you are using Bootstrap 4, just give your table a class of table. And let me just cut everything from here. And put everything in a container called table responsive. And we paste it all the way up there. So it should make our table look a little beautiful. Yeah, it is a little better and I will add some more fields here this is going to be for modify and if I come here TD yes this is uh, for the modify we have an edit and delete button here so we have a button and it is going to have the class of button b tn hyphen primary this is going to be for edit and I'll duplicate this one for delete also. Of course, for delete it should be danger, not danger. And I'll save it. Let's see how it looks here. So here for the modify, we have edit and delete. So if you want to delete something, of course, you are going to fire a function. So you will write a, a, a event here called click. And it is going to call the delete function, let's see. But you never call anything any function delete because delete is a reserve word in javascript so we can say delete product and this function is going to fire and which product you want to delete you just pass product this is the part which we do not have access to the product if you pass the product here this product is going to contain only name and price that is the wrong part of the structure of the firebase so in the documentation nowhere they explain how you can store those data so i hope it will be a lot easier in this video so if i come to the view tab here i will show you the data structure just open the product here you have the product object array here inside this one you have the object and inside it you have only name and price when working with edit and delete you must have an identifier for your uh, data in the, fi in the file store, if you come to the file store database, you have a unique ID for every document you create. But in our data, we do not have access to those ID. The reason is because when we push that to the data model here, we use the get.data. And get.data is good only if you are reading only the data. But if you are dealing with any other functions in the file store, this is not how you do that one. When we discuss more about date and time, I will explain more about some uh, some more functions than helpers in Firestore, so that you will understand how it is going to work when you deal with date and time and some other functionalities. For now, let's fix the problem here. When you push it, we should not push only the data. We must push the document only. The doc, if you push the doc here, it is going to store all of the firebase data with all the helpers it has so let's save it this time if i come here of course we don't have the data here for now if i open the product here this time we have our product object array here and inside the object we have all the data here now imagine if you have used the object oriented programming you might ask yourself where is the data here now how you can get those data if you go to the firebase and i don't know actually where is the data here but there are some functions that will help you get those data so let's see if i a little bring it down we don't have the name and price here why 
because the, the structure of our data has changed now we have a lot of functions here a lot of objects inside another object they are very important here in the future video I will show you how, how you can use most of them so for now what is the fix for our data so the small fix is like if you come to the table here you have product for each product this is just fine what you can do is you can just say data here for every product now you have access to the data which you had access previously in the loop when you say product.data and if I come here okay for the price also you can say data dot price this is how it is going to work data function is not defined here you cannot find any data function here that's why it is a little confusing to understand how you can use data this is defined in firebase so you can have access to data dot name data dot price and any other field in your database so if this time if I save it coming here it is showing just fine now how you can access to the key you have an underscore key but if you write underscore key here let's say product dot if you for example you say product dot data function dot key it is not going to work like that so how you fix this one first we have to define our function here so the delete product function I will come here and define it like this this is just behind the scene of course I will show you a tool that will make you make your life a lot easy for now so what this function is going to do this is going to accept the doc or the document and for now let us alert if we can access to the doc here we can have access to the ID also so I will remove the key here I will remove the data here here is what we have this is the document the product we have if I save it for now let's click on the delete and see what how it is going to work you click on the delete you have object so this is fine we have object how you can get the ID of that one if you come to the documentation if you have access to doc.id here you have the same way to access doc.id here so if you say doc.id you save it and coming here click on the one of the button you have the ID here now you have access to everything you want you want for now our data do not have any timestamp stuff like that but in the future video there are many helpers like data there are some someone for data and time that will help you deal with date and time and other data types in the future videos so this is how you work behind the scene but there is a lot easy way of doing all this stuff that we are going to do now of course these are behind the scene if you are going to it is not real time also if you want to do uh, like real time database you add something it should automatically refresh the database it is going to have a watcher on the data in the database like if you change it is going to change uh, change your data here so how you do that one if you do that one you have a listener here listen for real time database real time update and this is going to be a little confusing if you can read this here you can do that one mm, I will just put it for now maybe in the future video I will explain how you do that one let's go to the tools that you can use there is a tool called view file store this is special for Vue.js what this is going to do is this package is going to help you deal with file store easily what they say cloud file store binding in real time you don't have to worry about real time update and when you your data changes stuff like that they will handle everything for you so in the future videos I of course I will use this one but for now to complete our data here to delete edit and delete I will just stick with the basic file store so you should understand behind the scene of data structure but what we are going to use this tool of course this tool also has some limitations and I will show you how you can fix those limitations uh, but you have uh, you must know the basic of file store behind the scene then you will understand uh, what are the limitation and how you can fix them if you wanna go further there is a very nice website of course most of you know about this one the alligator.io I have like I have seen these people are really really nice people and they write the article in a very nice way and short way if you are going to learn anything about front-end development they are having a lot of cool article here this is not advertising this is just a resource 
of course most of you know this one so this is one of the article that they are going to use from view file store so if you want to give it a reading this is very comprehensive and very nice so in the future video of course i will use these tools to make our life easy but this is how it is going to work behind the scene so i hope it has been informative for you if you have any question feel free to ask below the video but i can't uh, like answer all the comments because if you get a small error because of semicolon so i cannot give you an advice of why it is not working because you have missed a semicolon so please feel uh, free to google it before you ask your question thank you for watching